Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And you're also going to be listening to Peyton from Peyton on the Radio. And you're going to be listening to Joe Borick from Sport, Fa- Sport Fanatic News, who also have fantastic channels. Highly recommend you check them out. Uh, we're going to be doing lots of these collaborations like this because it's fun. We just did, uh, we just did, uh, what did we do just recently? We, we did, uh, what's the last one we did? L.A. with John was yesterday. L.A. with John. I did Edmonton with... Edmonton um, was with Peyton. Is this the first time you've worked with Joe Peyton? Yeah, it is, isn't uh, it? Yep, it is. Yep. Wow. This is, uh, so yeah, this is the first time we've all worked together. Um, but we're going to be doing, today we're going to be doing the Ottawa Senators. Uh, but this is a series I've been doing called what do i call it i gotta look i need to look it on my son what i actually call it i think it's called nhl look ahead frolic and you gotta have frolic if you don't have frolic there's something wrong with you and if you don't you're gonna find it here right now ottawa senators what they did in free agency this year where they're heading that's what we're talking about today so i'm gonna start with uh joe joe what do you like about Ottawa and what they've did in free agency so far this year? And why do you think they made some of those moves? Um, I mean, I think you hit it on the head before we start. Obviously, they have Evgeny Dadanov now who they brought in. That's the big one of uh, $5 million for three years to bring in a veteran that can get you a good, consistent uh, output each year um, with your young thing, which is also something we're not accustomed to seeing Ottawa doing because of exactly what you said, Pirlo, before the video. Eugene Melnick makes his own cap. So normally they don't bring in veterans that they sign for a couple years that seem to fit in well to mentor young guys like Dadanoff would fall into that category. Um, obviously, you brought in Galchenyuk, which Galchenyuk's kind of at his uh, last or one of his last trial um, contracts before he probably will just go to play overseas if he can't uh, figure it out fully in the NHL. But uh, he's, he's a guy that has some skill. If you can figure it out for him is Ottawa, the place that he's going to figure it out in. I'm not so sure about that, but we're, we're, we're waiting and see and see where uh, time, time takes uh, that with uh, coach DJ Smith. But uh, their big thing is uh, a lot of their guys, you got Logan Brown, who's a very solid center, in my opinion. You got Kachuk, who's a very good player, obviously. After this year is the first time you're going to have to pay them as RFAs. So I'm assuming Melnick is probably being stingy with his money, too, because he wants to just, is, knowing him, he wants to have as much extra money as possible. So when he pays these guys after this season, they still have cap space where it's not, okay, now we paid this guy. Now we have $2 million. Like, I think he would rather have it where people fall off. Cause if you look at them, they have a lot of guys that fall off after this year. Nisimov has four or five off. They only signed Gubberson for a year at 4 million. Uh, Riley has one five fall off. Uh, Anders Nielsen has two, six fall off. They're done paying Gabrick after this year. Um, So, there's a lot of things that fall off for them, which is why I think he's not spending the extra cap space now because he wants to have so much extra cap space in next year's free agency after they already sign people that they hope take a, well, Brady Kachuk's going to take a leap. That, that they hope Logan Brown also and some others that are RFAs take a leap. I'm just the most confident in a, Logan Brown being that other guy with Brady Kachuk, where you also have Drake Batherson who could take a leap as well and then Norris you don't have to worry about until after next year anyway so that's not as big of a concern a guy that I have always liked as a bottom pairing defenseman with some potential if they can figure him out obviously Otto was not like the team we talked about with John the Kings where it's like all defensemen go to fix themselves in Ottawa usually that's the opposite uh but if uh Christian Yaros can kind of figure himself out in Ottawa. He has some skill. He's a guy I just would like to see what he can do because one of two things is going to happen there. He'll figure himself out and they keep him because his age is still not high or he'll figure himself out and he'll become an asset piece for Ottawa trading someone in their mid-20s after they actually got him going a little bit and churning. So either way, that seems like it's a good no-risk pickup for them. So I do like what they're doing. 
I think they're about two years at least away because I think Melnick is making this year save all the money we can so when we pay hopefully two of our RFAs big money because you're not just going to want Brady to really take a step this year that we still have cap space after next year because you're going to want to be paying someone else big money next year that means only Brady Kachuk took a step this year and that's not what you want so how about okay yeah I've I'm a, I don't know about the defense. I think they haven't – sometimes they haven't did too bad with defensemen. But what do you think, uh, Peyton, about with some of the moves they made, like uh, with Dodonoff and Galchenyuk? It was a little bit weird. Well, first of all, Duclair leaving might have something to do with that, right? Yeah. You know what? Duclair leaving the team, um, it was a tough – decision with that one but Duclair he was being his own agent probably won a lot of money as well picking up uh, Dianov like you get a veteran guy on the team uh, and a guy that could play alongside a Chuck and Colin White Colin White who came off kind of a rough season uh, and he's gonna look to rebound as you paid him a lot of money right like you want him to rebound uh, a lot of also a lot of people don't talk about this Austin Watson they picked him up through trade with Nashville um, should be a very nice depth guy, physical, right? Should bring in some protection for guys like Tim Stetzel that will be jumping into the lineup, Connor Brown, stuff like that. Um, I'm also really excited for Logan Brown and Jake Batherson. I remember watching Jake Batherson in the uh, the World Juniors there and him light it up. I was always really excited when Ottawa assigned him. We've seen this before. Mark Stone, for example, played for the World Juniors and he became a big time player in Ottawa. So I'm really excited to see how well Jake Batherson will take his step up this year. Defensively, they're still really weak. That's still a developing point for the Ottawa Senators. I, I do really like Christian Wallon and Mike Riley. They're still very young people. And, of course, picking up Matt Murray, who is um, a goalie that is kind of underrated in the NHL. A lot of people look over at him and say that, he was playing in Pittsburgh. He's been having some bad years, but he's just, he's had some really bad defense scores, and he's going to another bad one, but he's going to one that is developing, and especially with how good of a draft. And I know a lot of people are saying that they didn't have the greatest draft in the world, but the Ottawa Centers picked up some big body pieces that should help them in the future for years to come for future playoff runs. Yeah, um, I there's a there's something with the the Donoff, which uh, never, I was going to mention something about that. It reminds me of the Hercules cartoon when I was a kid. <laughs> 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 it was a monster named something similar to that. Anyways, doesn't matter. And Galchenyuk. The thing I like about those moves is um, if the team miraculously just comes together really quick, they can keep the Donoff. And uh, continue on with him. And mm. I, I don't know if it's miraculous, actually. There's a lot of pieces in Ottawa, like you mentioned, with Batherson. They've been grooming him for quite a long time. And I like him. I think Batherson, he put up some good points in the A. He could come up and start really surprising people this year. And, and I mean, got, he was. He was producing pretty well in the NHL. I mean, not the greatest total 23 goal or a guy like Drake Batherson who is slowly developing. Like you said, he's doing really good in the AHL, which sometimes relates into the NHL. I think it will. I, I really like him as a player. And they have Nor I think was it Norris? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. several other players. Uh, Brown has been working for a long time to get up into the lineup. He's got a lot of passing skill and stuff like that. So if they come together and it looks like the window is a little smaller, then maybe they uh, – like their window is small to start competing, they keep them. But if it's not looking like that, at the deadline, he has he didn't sign an NTC or anything like that. I think mm -hmm. the donor took the money, and I don't blame him. Five million dollars in this cap world is a lot of money where you have a flat cap. I don't blame him at all. And then they can trade him at the deadline to a team that's looking for offense for another first round pick or more picks that we didn't did we mention yet again all the picks they have again in the next draft yeah, so in the this second is round a, three of this them is, yeah exactly so this is a team that um has been uh what's his name uh their general manager always forget his, oh, his name dorian 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 has got a lot of flack for some of the things he's done like the duchene trade and 
picking up Duchesne and what he got back for him and all that kind of stuff like that. But actually, he's done fairly well collecting draft picks, and their drafting has been very good. So um, I, I give him a lot of props for that. And I give him a lot of props for taking, again, Gilchenyuk, as you said, is a guy that um, seems to have not been able to get himself in an NHL lineup up until now. But there's no doubt that he has talent. And in Ottawa, if he can turn it around for some, for some reason in Ottawa, there's a guy that can you can trade for another pick or you can keep if everything is gelling the way they want. Um, maybe part of the reason why is, he hasn't been doing well is he hadn't had some Russian uh, camaraderie there. So you have Dodonov and Gelchanyak. Maybe they're friends and we don't even know it. That's a good so, point. Um, what do you think, uh, Joe, on your slant? Because uh, uh, I remember we talked about this before. I never really even thought about it, about how Murray did play on behind a very poor defense in Pittsburgh, which doesn't get talked about a lot. What do you think about Murray and Ottawa's acquisition of Murray there? How do you think he's going to do in Ottawa, Joe? I think he'll do fine because it's not like they signed him for a year. So he's going to get to grow with the the uh, defense there. And you got Lassie, Tomas, uh, and uh, Eric Brandstrom coming up during when, whenever he's there. Obviously, while he's there, they're going to come up, whether it's this year or next season. So uh, he's going to get to grow with them as they come into the fold. That's uh, really the best case scenario, in my opinion, for any goalie as soon as someone comes up getting to grow with them right away. So I think that's going to work wonders for them. Obviously, they got uh, Shabbat, and uh, like Peyton said, they got uh, Mike Riley, and they added uh, Gubberson for this year. Uh, and then Christian Malanen's a good younger defenseman. If if Christian Yaros can step up, that's what makes their defense look better because Nikita Zaisev with me has always been a eh, like – Sure, yeah, you're a decent defenseman. I'm not gonna like he's not he's a give or take guy. So like he that's why uh you need other guys really to step up and then Zystev looks good in a good defense. Nikita Zystev's not really one of those defensemen that normally looks good in a average to mediocre defense because he's just a solid big body defenseman. He's nothing overly special. So that's why I think depending how quick um Guys like Tomas and Gubberson can come up, and also Soros and Mike Riley's of the world start to step up more, really impact how well their defense plays, which impacts how well Matt Murray can play. Because if he has to dive all over the place, that's not his fault if he doesn't have the best stats. So I think he, either way, he's going to do fine because it's all going to work out in the end. Whether the beginning is very pretty or not will remain to be seen, but all people have to realize is it's with this team, Ottawa fans know they're going to have a little bit of patience. I don't think if Murray does bad for the first week, you're going to hear every Ottawa fan going nuts about it. They're not going to, I don't think they think they're going to win the cup this year, at least they shouldn't. So this is like a good building block. You have a goalie that's 26, that never happens, be able to get them two time cup champion. I think it's a perfect move. The defense is growing. Because uh, imagine a defense if Tomas and and, and uh, they all pan out. And uh, you have Tomas, you have um, Branstrom, and you got, obviously, Shabbat in your defense. And then you have whether one of Mike Riley or Rolainen really emerge. Then you have a four-deep good defense. And that's only going to happen in at m most two years and probably by next year all those guys could potentially be in the league. So that's why I think it's not too far away. I will say this year might be ugly at times for Matt Murray because you're going to have defensemen in and out of the lineup as people come up, but it's not going to be his fault. It's going to be because of a chemistry thing. Uh, there, there's also uh, um, uh, Bernard Docker that they're talking about being able to bring in this year as well. And Lassie Thompson – yeah, he's having a good year already in 2021. So I think um, that could definitely be – there's a lot to look forward to. That's pretty much what we're talking yeah. about with Ottawa. They've been talking about that for quite some time here. Um, it should be interesting well, to I see. Say, one more thing I had, though, is the big thing is spending the extra. Once you get these young guys where they're going to be, it's what you said before the video. You have to finish the pieces of the puzzle with the extra cap space you have then. 
Yeah. Whereas Eugene Melnick going to be willing to do that. That's the only question that remains with Ottawa. It's not, will you ever be able to get to a team to compete? That's going to happen at most in two years, probably, with the way that guys are coming up the brinks. It's, will you get to a team that can go over the top because your owner's willing to be near the cap? Yeah, that's I, the question that's going to remain. To I think be. Melnick will do it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Melnick takes a lot of flack, and I've given him a lot of flack. But if you really look at it, what he's done in in a lot of ways is he just refuses to give older players huge contracts. Um, and in all honestly, see, I'm going to send this over to uh, to Peyton here. Um, people took he took a lot of flack for not signing Carlson, but we're looking at it. What do you think now of that, Peyton? Well, you take a look at Eric Carlson, and I think Melanick seen that, like, hey, well, he he was struggling, and well, he didn't really struggle. He was a Ironman during that playoff run that they took, but there was no way that the Ottawa Senators were going to pay him eleven and a half million dollars like San Jose did. There was no way, right? Like we've been seeing that progressively going up for the Ottawa Senators, and I I follow the Ottawa Senators a lot, and I follow their fan base. Like, the Thomas Shabbat deal for the Ottawa Centers was a proving point. Like, you, you see that this kid gets $8 million for, uh, what was it, eight years, I think? It, uh, yeah, eight years, yeah. He got a big long-term deal, which never usually happens in Ottawa. You usually just see the four to three years, which is what you were seeing from Pierre Dorian with a lot of your younger players like Hoffman, like Pajot. But now you're seeing guys like Colin White and Shabbat getting these big deals. And I think it's helping out the confidence of the team. And especially getting Dadnov this year, they're becoming more of a market would never really talk about in Ottawa because people would want to leave Ottawa. No one really wanted to go to Ottawa and play there um, because they weren't the most successful team in the world. So Melnick, I think, will let go of the cap restrictions later on in the years. And he said that he would. He would go right up against the cap later on in the years. I think he said around 2021, 22, he said he'll be willing to go right up against the cap to try to make this team a Stanley Cup winning team. But I think the way that they really wanted to focus on was drafting. They wanted to focus on drafting so much. Like I was looking at some of the drafting reports. They've had a lot of players from North North Dakota, um, like Jacob Bernard Dogger, like Shane Pinto. Um, they picked up a couple other guys, from, and Jake Sanderson as well. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to develop a really nice, quick team but they're having a lot of these guys that play together so they could automatically gel in the lineup when it comes to playing. Like Sanderson and Bernard Darkey, you might see a, a future defensive pairing along those two guys. Shane Pinto as well. So I'm really excited to see what the Ottawa Senators will do, especially with their prospects and especially what they're doing with that. They have a lot of great defensemen. Like you already have like a top four in Sanderson, Bernard Docker, Bransham, and Thompson. It's it's absolutely insane what Pierre Doring has done. And I don't think they deserve the flack. I think they deserved it when they were treating all their players like crap. But it was just a huge old turmoil. And that's what happens to rebuilding teams. We've seen it with the Oilers. We've seen it with the Sabres. When your team just starts playing like crap, players start turning on each other and the team just explodes. And then this is what you get is a ton of good prospects. Yeah. And if Shabbat is any indication of what Dorian can do with contracts, then they're looking pretty darn good because Shabbat at $8 million for the next eight years is going to be an absolute steal. Oh, it will. Like, <laughs> that, that is a that's great why, contract. And that's, great why you gotta, that's why you got to look at the Kachuk contract. He expires after this year. Will Dorian look to do lock him up early in his career too so it's not as big of a cap hit in the end? Yeah, I'm sure they're going to look to it, but yeah. that's a little different because you've got a Kachuk family there that's pretty <laughs> – that's pretty wise to what uh, NHL team might be doing. And uh, Keith Kachuk, he got some pr he got some of the biggest contracts for a winger in his time in the NHL at that time. Uh, so he's not a guy that's going to be like, okay, let's go all yeah. team friendly. It also I, I think it also depends on the difference of the family because we do see that with. Uh not to cross uh, sports again, but with basketball, the ball family is not all the same. Lonzo kind of lets his dad talk over him and 
be the ruler of him. Where the his son that's in the draft this year already said, I don't, I have he he has his opinions, I have mine. So if Brady Kachuk's more like he has his opinions, I have mine. I don't care that you don't take a team friendly deal, Dad. I am. That would be different. Where maybe Matthews one that thinks more like his dad. Like it depends. Like Keith, it it, it, de- it depends uh, on the uh, situation. That's why mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting. Just because Keith, rightfully so, wanted as much money as he got in his career. He was the one of the best of his time. He had the right to oh. ask for that. Keith was uh, a big yeah. Keith was a big union guy. So we'll see what happens with that. But I'm I'm saying that the possibility is out there that they're not going to take the team friendly deal that Shabbat did. And if they aren't going, if he isn't going to take the team team friendly deal that Shabbat did then we, then you start having the what li- has been like to be called the Eugene Melnick type uh, thing going on where he I just can't this is one guy that they're going to pay huge for I just can't see if he's asking for 10 million dollars a year or whatever um, uh, they're, they'll probably have to go with a uh, a bridge deal to start off with in that case but hopefully for Ottawa's sake he can go like something like sign him up to nine million dollars a year for eight years right now because that contract is going to look great in five years too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, boys and girls, I think that's our full forty-two. That's uh, all. I, I unless you do. You guys have anything else on Ottawa that's on your mind? Um, yeah, I got the North Dakota. I think Matt Murray, one of the most un- overrated goalies. Um. But overall, I, I like the way that Ottawa centers are growing. Uh, I think they're one of the biggest future teams in the NHL. I think this is a team that you're going to be definitely seeing on top of the Atlantic Division, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. I'm really excited to see that Atlantic Division here in the next couple of years when Ottawa really starts taking those big strides and uh, becoming one of the best teams. Yeah, what do you think, Joe? What do you, do you, what's the outlook for Ottawa here now in the next little while? Yeah. I, like I said, I think they're about a couple years out still because you got you're gonna have guys come up this year and then get their first looks, and unless if they go on a Kings esque run with from the young energy, like the Kings did this year, a tad bit earlier than the Kings because of their call ups, they're not likely to be in contention or make the postseason this year. That would be a surprise to me. Uh, could they be in the first couple spot like? in a better seating than at the bottom of the conference, 100%. I could see them moving up and being fourth to last or, like, moving up a couple spots and progress, showing progression, getting closer to 500, all that good stuff. Um, but I don't see them actually going anywhere this year. I would say the first year they can really surprise you and make the playoffs will be the 2021-22 season that people will probably mm-hmm. be projecting them as a – sleeper team that might sneak in but then maybe they would even be more than that so that's where my look is for them yeah i think it really depends on how fast stutzla uh starts to develop because i mean that guy's got panarin like looking skills so again can change everything and of course kachuk i mean there's a lot to look forward to there in Ottawa, I really liked what you mentioned there about the North, about the, the Dakota guys. Um, I honestly didn't put two and two together when they selected Sanderson there in the draft. And uh, a team that did something similar to that is St. Louis Blues. They picked a lot of guys from the same Saskatchewan area, like Bozak, mm-hmm. Shen. Uh, I believe it was Shen. Uh, There's a few other guys who are all from the same area, and that does bring a chemistry, and certainly has allows a team to play for each other quite a bit when you have that kind of uh, family-like atmosphere. So that was a really good point. And uh, all you Ottawa fans, um, we think that there's something special going on there in Ottawa. And I I think that uh, Dorian's taken a lot of flack and maybe even uh, we even even Metzler. uh, But uh, in the long, in the short run and in the long run, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and there's going to be a lot of success in Ottawa. Thanks for listening in, boys and girls. This is our 442. This has been Peyton. Thank from you. Peyton, Peyton on the radio. And, uh, of course, Joe Boric. He's with us at BPAL Picks. We make fine sporting picks for you for absolutely free up until hockey season right now. Go check it out. Uh, sign yourself up. I'll give you your money right back.
They're just like, you put it, I'll give it right back. I don't even want it. But go have fun and see how we do with people make money. That's why we're doing it. He also, We also have www.steelflyers.com. It's a website that we're building right now. You can go over and check it out right now. But it's going to be growing immensely. Every sport, every team uh, will be covered and there'll be a news feed going through it. It's going to be the best one in the land. That's our full 42, boys and girls. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.